Welcome to Backseat Drawing Workshops. I'm Eric. I'm Josh. So if you tuned into our last tutorial, we taught you how to draw a tree as we plow forward to create a super nice foresty background. Uh, super nice and foresty. Yes. So in this episode, we're going to focus on filling in the forested background, but we're going to be using the tips and tricks that we learned in the last tutorial. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create a layer underneath our tree layer and above the background layer, because what we're going to be doing is putting elements of the background that are basically behind these trees. So let's go ahead and go back to our brick brush. We're going to use that color that we use, but this time we're going to make the trees a lot smaller. So let's go ahead and just put in a bunch of these. These are just sticks, right? They're not trees at all. Oh, they are trees. They what? Are. They just, they're so thin though. Yeah, because they're in the background, so they're far away. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just kind of randomly putting them in here and there because it doesn't really matter where these are going to be far in the background and they're going to be blurred out. Now, they are all kind of look like they're the same height, though. Isn't that a little weird for perspective? It is, but I'll show you how to mask that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> So now that we have a bunch of them, I'm going to move this palette down to the bottom so we're not interfering as much. Now that we have a bunch of them, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same tactic that we used for the foreground trees. We're going to make a new layer, we're going to make that clipping mask, then we're going to increase the size of the brush. We're going to take that color, create a bit of texture on all these trees, and take the lighter color and do the same. And I can kind of get all the trees at one time. Well, at nearly the same time. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to use our overlay blend mode and we're going to create them a little bit of shadow to the tops. This is with the airbrush brush. That's right. And this is you're just adding lighting to the trees at length rather than like as individuals, like right. broader lighting. Right, because what we're going to do now is we're going to send them way into the background. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to come up here to filter. <gasps> we're going to go to blur. What? <laughs> we're going to go to Gaussian blur. Gaussian. Gaussian. Gaussian? All right. Now what Gaussian blur does is it basically applies a blur to the entire layer. So what I want to do is I want to send these, as you can see, it's at five. If I turn it completely down to zero, they're all crisp and sharp. What I want to do is I want to turn this up until I get a satisfactory level of distance in those trees. So if you look here, it looks like these trees now that are in the foreground are much closer to us because they're in more focus than those trees that I just made that are going further into the background. Pretty cool, huh? That's fascinating. <laughs> so let's go ahead and commit that. Now, we have a few more trees, but it's really not quite a forest yet. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create some elements behind even these guys and some elements in front of them. So let's make a new layer behind the trees that we just made, these background trees. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some texture in the background, like leaves and shrubs and a bit of the canopy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to these foliage brushes. We're going to use this guy right here, this 250. It's a little bit of a canopy making brush. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size a bit. And I want to give this a little bit of a, like a goldish, maybe the trees are kind of turning a little bit in some areas. So I'm going to take this lighter maroonish, or I guess a kind of a dark maroonish color. It looks gonna, like brown to me. It's brownish. Yeah. I'm okay. going to go ahead and hit this in the background a little bit with the, uh, that maroon color. Oh, uh, that's really weird because they're so sharp now. They are. But we are going to essentially do the same thing we did with the trees that are in front of it. We're going to send them in the background by blurring them. Oh. All right. Now I'm going to take some of these lighter colors here, like this light green. Again, you can download. No, I, I'm sorry. I, so I kind of see you can download these brushes on, on your your DeviantArt, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, even among so you're using only three colors here, but I, I'm seeing more colors than that. Is that... That's part of the brush. The brush okay. kind of jitters between colors that are uh, relatively close to it in value. So Is that, that it, a, like along the value axis or the hue axis or, or it's what? It's hue and value. Okay. Yeah, so it, uh, it, it jitters between the colors. 
So it's doing a lot of work for you. Not only is it turning and spinning on its own so that it gives a different textures, but it's also doing that, that color jitter. It's also doing a size jitter. And it's, it's all to create just, just texture in the background. So here we have a huge section of, of shrubbery. But like Josh said, it looks like it's actually in front of these brushes here, or these trees, because it's too crisp. So we're going to go back up to filter. We're going to go to uh, blur. We're going to Gaussian blur. And we're going to send those way in the background. And I think I even want them even more blurred out. And let's go ahead and commit that. And you can see now that they're, they're much further in the background than the trees that we created that are here. And Background, background building is all about layers and, and making sure that it looks like there's has a, a strong depth of field. Okay, so why why did you why didn't you just make it blurry to begin with? Why do you have to go through all that detail? Because it's mostly missing, isn't it? It is, but it would have been harder for me to create the texture with an airbrush and making it soft and getting all that in when all I had to do was just use the one brush and you can saw you saw how fast I did it and then I just sent it in the background and there are going to be scenarios in the future tutorials where I'll show you how to use that brush in an instance where we don't want to blur it just for okay. today's purposes since this is so far away that's the reason I blurred them out but right now what I think I'm having a problem with is the lack of color variation in it I did like that it brought more maroon and yellow and kind of orange colors in it, but I want it to fade in. Remember, we were talking in our first tutorial about this background color here. This atmosphere should be affecting all of this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer above that shrub layer. I'm going to set that blend mode to overlay. I'm going to take the color that's in the background here and with a big airbrush, this one specifically, with a big airbrush, I'm going to just take that background and I'm going to hit the edges just a bit so I can look like that maybe that background element is being af affected by the color in the uh, atmosphere. Oh wow. For the edges, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the darker colors. That way it just kind of takes it into the background even more. It's like magic. Just like magic. And I think I do want maybe some of the edges, since the edges of the areas here will be affected by the light shining through the trees and through the leaves, what will actually give off kind of a, a glow from the color of the value of the leaves. Uh, and then it'll take that into the uh, the background a bit. So now what it looks like is the light hits the leaves and the leaves themselves illuminate the space around it. So without that layer, I can turn it off. You can see that it kind of looks a little bit flat. Can't really tell what it is. That layer back on with just a little bit of airbrushing on overlay, we were able to add a little bit more color and a little bit of life to that. I'm gonna go ahead and take those three layers and I'm gonna merge them together. I'm pretty satisfied with how they look. Whoa, all of them? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is this layer of trees we've maintained because I need to still build some of the canopy behind them. So I'm going to put another layer between those trees, the ones that we created at the beginning of the video, and the background. I'm going to go back to that brush, the canopy creating brush. This time I'm going to create a dark green section here at the top and I'm going to just use a big, big brush and kind of paint in a little bit of that canopy back there. Is there any shape that you're going for here or is it just? No, I just kind of play around with it, see what I like most. Kind of being random. Yeah, like nature. random's better. That way, if you're, if you're just going in straight lines, it's not gonna look as convincing. So what I tend to do is I kind of just circle around, circle, circle, and just kind of hit up the spaces, making sure I weave section of light and dark together. So here I might add a little section of light, then I bring a little bit of section of that dark in. Section of light, section of dark. Oop, that's blue. Ooh. There we go. Now, would you say that these leaves are happy? The leaves may not be, but the trees definitely are. But they're little, they're little too. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're just creating a section of canopy that's behind these background trees. Now the problem is these background trees are still blurry so they seem far away. That means these leaves need to be equally far or further. So we're going to go back to Gaussian Blur and we're going to just take them straight into the background. You can see that they're crisp in focus when they're at the bottom. But as I move this up and blur them away they kind of recede into the background. I do still want to maintain a little bit of that crunchy texture in the leaves so I'll think 23 is probably just fine. 
So these are not, this is not the foliage for the, the this like middle ground trees that you made earlier, right? Right. This is really just okay. to fill in the background space between these furthest trees and these shrubs and the, the furthest part of the background element. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to, I feel like this open space here still needs something. It's just not quite filled in. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to just make a couple more trees and see how that goes. So let's go back to our brick brush. I'm going to use a lighter blue because they're pretty far away at this point. I'm going to just kind of hit this section up with a couple more trees. Nothing really special. I'm going to take this big, big brush here and erase the bottoms of them as if the atmosphere itself is creating kind of a fog and we can't really see them that well. And I'm going to go back up and I'm going to go ahead and go back to Gaussian Blur. And I'm really going to take those into the background. Maybe about right there. And I do want them to change in color because they're all one color at this point. I'm going to make a new layer, create that clipping mask, go back to my big airbrush, and I'm going to just hit them up with a little bit of color on overlay and see what that does. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, ooh. are you going to use yellow? Yep, I did. I just grabbed oh. some yellow from right here. Yes, I guess And just it. hit them out. And I think I'm going to take a nice actual deep kind of purpley color and then hit the tops and kind of make them recede just a little bit. Purple is a good color. It is. It's my, one of my favorite colors, actually. So it's as you can see things. here, I'm going to merge these two layers together. What that did is it just added a little bit more to the background. I do think that it's a little too aggressive, so I'm actually going to knock down the opacity just a bit and really take them into the background because I don't want people to be focusing on the background when there's going to be some figure in the foreground. We're really just trying to create an element of texture in the background. And let's go ahead and commit that. And we're going to commit the canopy layer as well. Now all we have left are the two layers of trees and the background. Okay. Wow. <laughs> So that's basically how we create some of the roughage and background and, and sort of that blurred out detail that kind of creates a forest depth and atmosphere to our, our foresty background. In the next episode, we're going to focus on some of the mid-ground textures, including more shrubs, some grass, and little details. But until then, we'll see you on the next episode. Yay! Okay. Smell you later. <laughs> <laughs>